Buenos dias. We're on demo and we're going to discuss a little bit about semantic search and we're going to discuss maybe go to market strategy. Uh, Fede, do you, do you want to just show off kind of your latest improvements? Also, we'll talk about the uh, just the confounding problem that we're running into with our network. So, like, we have some latency that we're trying to figure out. Maybe a lot you might be able to. Uh, we won't do a live because we show secrets and stuff, but uh, maybe you can help us and brainstorm why our network is messed up. Well, where is um, what's happening when you say network? What's what's going on? Whenever we do a call from either our service to our own service or our service to OpenAI, uh, the latency is much longer than if you did locally. And by much longer, I mean order of seconds. It could take 10, 15 seconds for these requests to go through. But if we do it locally, it's it's fast. So if you've noticed, if you use Haley now, it takes her a while to respond. And yes. we're, we're, not, we're not sure why that happened. So um, maybe in the later portion of this meeting, uh, we'll, we'll jump off of the broadcast and we'll um, show you the problem that we're running to. Maybe you can give us ideas as to what, what's wrong. Okay. Okay, right. sounds good. Better, you want to jump in to just show off the, the goods? Uh, what goods? You got, uh, <laughs> <laughs> the uh, <laughs> the uh, update to our, um, when you run out of um, quota, we updated that message. We, oh, oh. the streamlined process. Can you show off the streamlined process a lot? Like, how fast All you right. can install it really now? Yeah, give me a sec. I delete everything. A lot. We've been working on some stuff. There's, there's some. Yeah, words. I, I can, I can hear that. Check. <laughs> <laughs> Try to get a chance to look at the database. Uh, no, not yet. Okay. We can also do that later. Um, remind me after we talk about the network issue, we'll go into the database we'll off the broadcast. That's great. <clears throat> Okay, I will show this um, locally. Let me see if I can find my app installation ink. So you remember a lot that our installation process was like painful right yeah last time you it, so. yeah but la remember last time i i connected with you guys you you uh fede was gonna make some some changes yeah yeah so he's showing off that right now yeah so this is the link that uh, you are sent after clicking this uh it's just a local one for for my local environment but it will send you here so Let's see, I guess everything is running. Um, so once you install the one app, click, one click to do add it, add the Slack, yeah. another click that he just did there to allow the, yeah. Yep. Yeah, then, and then it will Slack, ask you to continue with, with your Slack account and then give permissions Yeah. and you're signed up. You have that. And one thing there that you saw, it flashes that one page that we're going to, we're going to make it so it doesn't show that flash. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then right here, I assume that by default, they are with the free account, right? Yeah, yeah, they're on the free account now. So four clicks and you're signed up. Yeah, yeah. There's That's no good. there's no asking for, you know, open AI key or your, your org name. Yeah. We just make up your org name based off of your Slack team ID. Yeah, yeah. I, I should hide this for now. Yeah, but after after this, they just need to click on add to Slack, right? 
And then uh, they no, need it, to log into their account. It should be already installed. So they will see the status here. So if it says installed. Oh, really? They so, to... so you will skip the, the process of, of the Slack part? Yeah, it, it was like uh, this part that I showed at first. So you click here. Yeah, but they need to have a, a Slack account before, right? Yeah, yeah, they do. They do need. Oh, okay. okay uh, if yeah, they yeah. don't have a Slack account here, they will need to create one. Oh, they okay, got it, got it. They will need got to it. Yeah, yeah. You, you, yeah. Okay, that what you mean is that that shows because you already have an account. Otherwise, right. you will get a different different window. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The other got thing it. that's gonna happen is go back to the page. Um, when you hit the, when you hit this page and the first installation happens, it's going to prompt you. So I'll make it very clear: Hey, you've installed it. You know, uh, please upgrade. Blah blah blah. Yeah. So it'll be a modal on top of this page that you can close or go to upgrade. Uh, yeah. One question, uh, Fede: We have the add to Slack button there. Mm -hmm. That is confusing because it's already installed. It says it's installed, but then you have a button to add it again. Why is that? Yeah, I, I can hide it if it's already installed. But yeah. it was just yeah. And then uh, and and then after this, uh, what is next for the user? Because remember, the, the user is 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 going to see this. Uh, what? How do they know what what to do next? So in the prompt that comes up, it should tell them like, click here, and then it'll maybe go take them to their Slack. Okay. Would, would that would it be smart to use to instead of uh, having the the button that says add to Slack like a start session or something like that? No. Yeah, that can be good. Like, you know what I mean. Go to so Slack. that way they go to the session and directly from here. Yeah, I don't know. Because right now, like, you know the, the way. Everything. Yeah, the, the way I see it right now is that I'm I I'm, I I'm trying to see this as a, as a as a user. As any regular mm. user, mm. so um, where 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 do they go from here? How do they know where to go from here? Yeah, yeah. If they are familiar with Slack, they are probably going to know that it's going to be available okay. to Slack. But yeah, we, if we can, but can we you add like to have a button to say Slack. like uh, uh, that? There, you know, they can go to Slack from this page. Yeah, I don't know if we can create that kind of links, like deep links okay. in Slack, yep. but yeah, I can investigate. That's perfect. And then they will they will know that they have a free account by reading the subscription, right? Yeah, and they will yeah. see a model uh, on the oh. first uh, visit here that they will say, like, you have a free subscription. If you want to upgrade, click here. Oh, okay, okay. perfect. That's great. Wow. Wow, wow, that's a, that was a big improvement, you know, from it, last week. Inside of Slack, it's gonna you're gonna get a message from Haley. Okay. So it's also gonna prompt you when you get to Slack. It'll say like, "Hey, you've been uh, I'm I'm Haley. This is how you use me." Oh, perfect. That's great. So so Haley is gonna is gonna show like uh like uh it's gonna guide him through. Yeah, yeah, I'll tell you, um, you know, how to get help, how to do all that sort of stuff. Okay. Perfect. That's great, man. It's good. All right. Um, let's jump over to semantic search. Yeah, Alice joining us too. <clears throat> all right. Uh, I'm going to share my screen. If I can find this page. Okay, so here's the engineering document. This feature is gonna allow users to search for messages in Slack using natural language. The search will be powered by Vertex AI. That is not the case anymore. We're gonna be using um, Pinecone. The, a different offering. That company just focuses on uh, doing vert. Is ver, uh, what do you call it? Vertex, vertex um, search. 
So the results of the search will be include the top five messages with links and who wrote them, and with an option to have it be more messages that you can see. Yeah. And then I'll, I'll take those five messages and then I'll create a summary using ChatGPT 4 or 3.5 or whatever. Uh, there will also be a button to make the result public in the channel. If it's not a, if it's in a channel and not a direct message to Haley. So any questions about that? Yep. That makes sense? Yes. Yep. Okay. So in Slack, you have a simple command that you can do slash Haley search and then what you want to search for. So for an example here is I want to find out about project X. So I do slash Haley search project X. Okay. And then you can specify how many, um, messages you want to see that are related. It'll, it'll organize it based off of relevance, like what get the, the vector matches, yeah, vector, you know, it's a vector database. So you can also specify like, Hey, I want the top 10 messages to go and get my project X summary. I'll get all the, I'll get all the 10 messages with links to them and what they are and who wrote them. And then I can also get the summary from all those 10 messages. Okay. And then we'll have a help command. You can that's, just that's, that's what it means that, right? The, the dash top K. Yeah. The top, top 10 messages. Okay. Got it. This is optional it default to five, but if you want 50 or whatever, yeah, yeah. you can specify there. Yes. Got it. And then we have uh, the help command, which will let you get the information of how to use Haley. So they will, they'll tell you everything about, you know, uh, the different stuff. Yeah. That Haley can do. Uh, once again, we'll be storing this in Pinecone now. I spent a good amount of time looking at Google's, um, they call it Google matching in, engine. Uh, problem is that you can't do like live updates. Every time you want to create a new index, you have to like re-index it. So it's just not going to be usable. Uh, also the interface was you had to do a cloud bucket to put your data. And so the, it was just not a, a clean solution. Pinecone on the other hand looks much more promising. I reached out to their sales team to get started. I do have, uh, let me share with you guys the console. And then stop share, present, share screen. So here we can create an index. We're on, this is the free tier. We'll end up probably paying for it. Um, what most likely, especially if we grow and you can have different indexes here, right? Yeah. So this is what's going to power that smart search for Haley that, and then using a GPT four or 3.5 or whatever one you use. So, okay. so you're going to have a uh, two different sources, right? You're going to have all your messages that you have Haley ha that has access to will get put into this index so we can do fast search on it. Uh -huh. And then it'll, it'll generate those top five messages or whatever number of messages you wanted. Uh -huh. And it, this is going to be what's powering it. Got it. So that's what I'm going to be spending time today to do like a POC, right? Insert some messages, do some queries on it, just to make sure that this does what we want it to do. Because Got it. with Google matching engine, you could take the messages in bulk have it create an index on it. But then if you wanted to start inserting new messages in there, you have to recreate the entire index again. Okay. Oh, okay. Got it. And that could take 40 minutes or more. So it was just, it's just not a good solution. To, yeah, yeah, no. Uh, have so, you, have you, um, have you tested this, uh, this yet or not? No, today is when I started the free tier today, I'm going to spend the, the time to do the, the POC. Oh, okay. The API looks way more, uh, it's w more simple than what Google was offering. Uh -huh. uh, 
they had some examples on how to use it, but it's just not, it's not a good fit for our use case. Uh, if we try to, cause I was, I was leaning towards Google match engine cause we have credits. We have a hundred thousand dollars from Google for the cloud. Uh -huh. Here we have to pay for it. So this is like, starts at $70 and goes up and you know, we'll see, we'll see how it goes, but we will, you know, the, the, it's not like we're, we're starting, we're using it all for every single customer. They have to upgrade. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we might have to do, a. Um, uh, we want to make sure that data is, is isolated from organization to organization. So we might do an index per organization. Per organization, yeah. Yeah. So that way you can't get messages from, you know, other orgs. From other companies. Yeah. You want the isolation. So we'll probably have an index uh, for each one. We might be able to do stuff where, uh, depending on their yeah. APIs, if you can do like a, um, something to logically change it within an index, but I think that's not a good idea. Yeah. So every every company will have to have their own database, right? Their With own all the, the, all the history of messages on. Yeah. Right. And that'll make it much easier. Like if, if a company says to us, "Hey, I want you to delete my data," we can just delete the index. Yeah. 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 Again. All right. Share screen. So I'm going to be updating this doc as we're going through it. So that's pretty much like what you're saying is that it will be like, uh, like a privacy on each database that any information from a company won't, won't leave the, it will be just for that company. Right. 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 Yeah. There's, and I think even open has had issues where data is like leaked from organization, right? Mm -hmm. Like. We want to make sure that your data is secure and only you can access it. Um, and the ability for, if you want us to get rid of your messages that we can easily just go and delete it and prove to the organization, like, yeah, your messages are gone. Yeah. And for the, we have to actually store the messages themselves, you know, which might be sensitive um, and make sure that we can then easily create the summary. Right. The reason that we're storing the messages themselves is that when we pull it from the pine cone, that we can then create the summary. We could do something where we don't store the the message. We just store the the um, why am I blanking on the name the 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 vector of the of the message. But then we'd have to go and pull each message. It would be slower. Right. If we have to go into Slack, pull the messages, that sort of thing. So um, we'll see if we get pushback from customers, like storing yeah. the actual messages. And we can even take it a step further. We can tell them, hey, if you want to have your own home cone instance that you control, that we don't have access to, we'll let, let oh, we're doing the open AI key, right? You can provide your own key. We also let them provide their own pine cone. Right, then they control it. We just are using it for, you know, putting the, the putting data into their pine cone and then also querying it out. We would not have access to it then. But that would yeah. be more like a enterprise um, plus plus thing, right? And it'd be yeah. much more hassle for them. But that if if there's a big customer that really wants it, you know, and it, if it makes monetary sense for us, business sense for us, then we could go that route. Yeah. So and will the user have the ability to? to decide which which uh, messages they want to keep on the database and which ones they can delete. So that's one thing we have to do is if you delete a message in Slack, you should also uh, see it get deleted from Pinecone. Okay. So that's actually, um, I'll actually put, I'll make that a part of my uh, POC. Just, just in case, you know, some, sometimes they're doing searches that they don't want to keep on the database and you don't want to delete the whole database just for, because that person doesn't want that, you know, that message to, or that search to stay. Okay. So they have the ability to say like, oh, I don't want to, you know, something like, like a Snapchat, you know, that you can choose which messages you want to keep or, you know, by default, everything gets deleted, but then you can choose just to save messages or yeah like so the the i'll go into the, in the document itself talks about like 
which messages are getting put in because we're not putting in your private messages. Like if you're talking with someone else in the organization, you're not going to be able to search on those private messages. These yeah. messages have to be in a public channel. Okay. Or a channel that Haley's a part of. Uh, so the, the data we're going to store is the actual message, the embedding of the message, the, uh, the, the vector that we have, the link to the message, that's a link to Slack, the author, the channel, the org, and the timestamp of the message. Okay. Uh, this is not the case. Uh, so we're going to delete this. Deleted messages. Make sure that we're moving the index value of the embedding for all deleted messages. Um, so now we're going to talk about like how do you get the data in? So there's going to be two ways to do it. When you add Haley to a Slack channel that already exists, she's got to go and grab all those messages and index them. Okay. okay. So we're going to have a service that maybe we, whenever a customer upgrades, we spin up the service, you tell it the channel that needs to be um, batch put in, and then she'll do a hundred messages at a time, fetch them and then index them into Pinecone. Okay. And we'll use this uh, a, this Slack API for retrieving. And we'll try to do newest to oldest, right? So you can start searching for newer stuff before the older stuff gets um, indexed. Yeah. Some, some channels might have thousands and thousands of messages. It shouldn't take that long to do a whole channel, uh, but you never know. Uh, okay. So that's the background job that we'll have uh, yeah. and then on the fly. So after you've added Haley, at the point when you add Haley, everything before she was added is the background job. Everything that's new in the channel is on the fly message. And yeah. so whenever you add a new message, that's got to go and get indexed also. So as it's yeah. doing the old stuff, it's also doing new stuff as well. Yeah. Uh, pretty much feeding the, the index. Yeah, so into Pineco. So here we had some some uh, sample code that I had generated from from Bard. This is all bullshit. All this code is bullshit. So yeah. um, after I found out that it was just making up APIs and shit, it was telling me what I wanted to hear. So I was like, "Oh, this looks really good. I can use this." To, to implement it, it should be super, super simple. It's not the case. It's much more involved. When I asked it for, um, you know, the code itself, like if these APIs existed, like this would work. But the fact is that it's hallucinating these things. So don't trust. I think this is a, this is a big problem with, uh, with LLMs is, it can generate working code, but if you're using a new service, if you're using a service that is getting updated regularly, mm -hmm. it gets out of, it doesn't get in sync. I was hoping Bard, since it's also using like the Google index to generate its messages, because it has more up-to-date information than like ChatGPT, could give me that sort of thing, but that was not the case. So um, this code is all nonsense, so we're deleting it all. Okay. Okay. We talked about organization isolation. Um, maybe implemented using an index for each organization. Okay. Uh, how to use, to learn how to use this feature, users will be able to view a help message in Slack. The help message will explain how to use the feature and provide examples, just like I showed before. When yeah. the user upgrades their Planet Enterprise or when Haley is added to a channel, they will see a help message in Slack that explains how to use it. Use the feature. Oh, that's perfect. Okay. Uh, this is our plan. So I'm working on this POC Python script, uh, which will set up Pinecone. And I, I reached out to them. They also have something where they do like an LLM for like 
for an organization. So if they can, if that's available, that might be, um, we might even go a different route, which is you put your messages into an LLM and then you get like really smart answers back as opposed to just summaries. Yeah. yeah. Um, this was the embedding. We may still use this, this, this gecko embedding, uh, depends what Pinecone has. Uh, so Pinecone has, I think they generate, they help you generate embedding. So we'll probably use theirs. So pine cone. Uh, this is pine cone. Okay. Using pine cone. Pine cone, yeah. Okay. So that's the plan for implementation. Aiming for Q4, but I think we can get it done much faster, especially since the APIs look pretty simple. And then this depends on. Um, yeah. Maybe gecko settings. Uh, we have some risks, data privacy, like how do we make sure that the data is isolated? Yeah. Uh, the risk also is like, uh, this happens sometimes someone accidentally puts in a password or a secret right that gets indexed and they delete it we need to make sure that uh, that gets removed from our back end feature value will the customers value it um this is something that we need your help on a lot is to to talk to folks and say like hey you know my company is doing this product it lets you do search on your database of all the messages do you think that would be helpful because now you no longer have to ask everyone the same question over and over again. You can just yeah. clear, right? Yeah. But do you, yeah. you have to feed the database somehow, you know, to feed the uh, the index. And that way they can, you know, at least one time mm -hmm. that information needs to be shared, right? Right. So also like this is a risk, like what happens when you ask a question where there is no answer? Let's see here, too hard to use having it add to each channel. We are also thinking about like a, a button that will let you automatically up, just say add Haley to all public channels. But that would be something that we do like later on. It wouldn't be something that we do right away. Yeah. Uh, the search functionality may not be accurate. Uh, that we'll learn as I do the POC, like how good are these, these messages that match. The user interface may not be user friendly. It's kind of command line e, right? There's no like yeah. UI. You just have to know the the, the, the prompt. It's simple, uh, so we just need to make sure that it's um, for someone who's used Slack and used apps that have those kind of commands. It would be straightforward. But for someone that's never used it before, I mean, we need a video that they can see like how it's actually used, that sort of thing. Uh, Data ingest functionality may not be reliable. So it's something like when you're doing a long running background job, if there's a failure that happens, what happens? Like, do we do retry, that sort of thing? And then this is back to data privacy to make sure that data is secure within each one, which, within each organization. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. It should just be find or place. Oh yeah, I see. I see a lot of. I see a lot of vertex. Yeah. Okay. You should just copy Pinecone and then just paste it. <laughs> okay, infrastructure. We're going to use uh, functions for, so if, if you heard of lambdas in uh, AWS, it's like serverless, where whenever you call the back end, it spins it up automatically, handles it, and then spins down. We're going to do the same thing in GCP using functions. For, and then for the background jobs, um, they have a thing called 
create run job in Google Cloud. So we're going to be looking at that so that uh, whenever we need to do a background job, it spins it up, does the processing of the, the batch messages, and then, you know, dies off so we don't pay any more money for it. Yeah. We need an architectural diagram. We have some security that we want to uh, think about that we're doing things in a secure way. And then mitigation strategy, data privacy, we're open source, so you can see exactly what we're doing with the code, uh, ease of use, um, and a few other things in terms of uh, how do we mitigate those issues that we talked about, the risk that we talked about before. Yeah. Uh, and then this is all garbage. This is me trying to make it work and then giving up. So I, I documented everything I was doing before, but goodbye, Google. Yeah. And then um, each database will be encrypted, right? There, there, there is no way for, for any data or leak from one company to another one. Let's see your customer data is encrypted at rest and in transit. So. Okay. Although I don't know, you, 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 I have to dig into that, but that's a, that's a good point. Like at least we want to encrypt the messages, right? Yeah. The messages that we store need to be encrypted. So, and then we need to make sure that the, the data, you know, from one database doesn't get shared to other databases. Right. So, all right. So that's so, semantic search. Um, as soon as we, so I'm going to be doing kind of like POC work. I'm going to try to like get it as tight as possible so I can just hand over the code to Fede and then he can just uh, crank it out. Um, so we'll see how that goes. In the meantime, yeah. that is working on the streamlining process, right? That we showed you. So there's some stuff that we want to make sure that's just like just right. So when you do the process for the I, go go to market strategy, did you have any questions there? No, 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 no. Go ahead. So for the go to market strategy, I'm partnering, um, trying to find a partner that can do like affiliate marketing or, or partners. Um, partner matching, right? It helps me find partners that can be our reseller. And so there we'll, we'll give them a percentage of each sale. And then the platform takes a cut also. So in the beginning, it might be low margins, but that's just to get going. And then afterwards we can negotiate new contracts. Do you have a marketing person in the team? I'm the marketing person. Well, there's Ralph, uh, but he's been MIA for for a while now. Okay. Okay. I'm asking you because I know someone that that's what he, they do marketing, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and they charge quite a bit for the service. Uh, but he's a friend as well. Yeah, and I can just talk to yeah. him and see if he's interested on in the project as well. But that's mm -hmm. what that, that's what they do, you know, just marketing. Yeah. So, uh, we can do something where with him, we say, hey, you get a percentage of each sale. Mm -hmm. It's commission based, right? So yeah, yeah, yeah. If, he, if he's selling, you know, there's like a, a something that we do to track like a coupon code or something that we can track, whatever. And then we write him a check, right? As yeah. soon as the money hits our bank account, some amount of money goes to them. So yeah, uh, that's the entire idea of the partner uh, strategy is that we get a okay. bunch of partners. We tell them you're commission based. Whatever you sell, you're going to get a decent cut because we're talking about reoccurring revenue. So it's not just you're getting paid one time for the sale. You're getting paid every month. So yeah, you, yeah. Can of, you can make a lot of money if you're a salesperson selling your stuff. Yeah. No, no, no. That's perfect. That that's that's great. I I yeah. I'll I'll mention it. He's um they do um uh, digital marketing, uh, social media, and all that. You know and yeah, they're pretty good. So I'll, I'll, I'll put a word out for him on the last yeah. So you, you can share like the pricing structure, right? $4 for the one tier, seven for the enterprise when we have it. And then we get, you know, up to 50%. Yeah. yeah. And that's 
and that's each seat, right? So if you sell 100 seats, that's $400. No, sorry, that's uh, yeah, $400 a month for the low tier, and then we get 200 a month for that one sale every month, as long as you're a customer. Yeah. So yeah, of course, yeah, yeah. Keep a lot of keep a lot of money if you're you're selling our stuff then. Oh yeah, you can. I mean, if you you sell a lot, you can make a lot, and then and then the thing is that the 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 work is at the beginning. Once everything is, you know, all the accounts out, he he has sold quite a bit of accounts. I mean, you he doesn't have to do anything. He's just making you know, he's checks. We'll get he's the money. Checks. Yeah. Maybe yeah. you might check in. You might check in and make sure that the usage is going good or something, right? Like, hey, yeah. how's the app going? Let me know. I'll feed it back to the company, whatever. But other than that, it's just passive income. Yeah, yeah. That's, right? that's then, perfect. Yeah. So, and we worry about making sure that we have good uptime, reliability, all that sort of stuff. Yeah. Um, all right. So that's it on the um, on the. The initial stuff I want to discuss. So, is there anything else before we jump? We're going to jump off the broadcast and then discuss our uh, network issues that we're having. All right. Say goodbye to the. Uh, we got one viewer. Bye, bye, one viewer. <laughs>